Hi, I'm Angela. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Togo. I married a Satanist out of ignorance. Before you continue, take a second, subscribe, and don't forget to activate the notification bell so you don't miss the next stories. I got married at the age of 18 when I just got out of high school. I met Roger while I was in nursing school. At that time, Roger was a doctor. He was one of my teachers. After a six-month relationship, he proposed to me and I quickly accepted. When we got married, I didn't know much about him. I only knew what he presented to me. Roger was very handsome, distinguished, intelligent, and above all, very generous. After our wedding, we moved into his villa. It was large and beautiful. We lived there peacefully, sharing the love we had for each other. I took advantage of the fact that I wasn't yet pregnant to finish my studies. That's why I didn't worry about anything. As time went by, Roger only got better and made even more money. We went on vacation to foreign countries where we stayed in five-star hotels. Roger gave me all kinds of cars and used all kinds of cars as well. We even moved to a much bigger and fancier house. I was truly blessed. I was like a queen in a castle, the house had it had many rooms. I remember that when we were moving in, Roger chose one of the rooms in which he would do private consultations. But strangely, he hardly used it, the room was always closed. I must admit that sometimes I wondered about the exaggerated source of Roger's money. It surprised me a little. Since we had moved into this house, every night around midnight, Roger would get out of bed and come back 30 minutes later. Honey, what have you been doing that took you so long? Don't worry, honey, I was just having tea to go to sleep. Tea? Are you having trouble sleeping? I don't understand. Yes, I have trouble sleeping, and I bought a tea that I take from this hour in order to sleep well. You know that I have a lot of work to do because of my current social status. That night, I didn't say anything further, but one night, after he got up to drink his so-called tea. I felt pressed and went to relieve myself in the toilet that was near his office. Suddenly, I heard a kind of moaning. I was surprised, but when I tried to listen more carefully, the noise stopped. I came out of the bathroom, thinking that it was probably me hallucinating, especially since I had just woken up from sleep. After four years of marriage, I was still childless. And you don't seem worried at all, Roger, Roger, we've been married for four years now, but we still haven't had a child and you don't seem to care. No, sweetie, it's just that I'm very patient. The child will come. I'm so uncomfortable with this situation. Please let's go to the hospital and see a gynecologist. I'm worried. Uh, no worries, my dear. The next morning, we went to the hospital as agreed. We met with the gynecologist and he did some tests on us. When we got the results back, they were all favorable. Roger and I were both fertile. But doctor, why haven't I gotten pregnant in all these years if we are both fine? Science cannot explain why but know that as the results prove, you are both fertile so you will have your child. Just be patient. I went home with a heavier heart than before. I couldn't have been more anxious. If I was as fertile as the tests prove, why haven't I had any children yet? I found it all strange, but I was patient. One night, I was startled at midnight. I had just had a nightmare in which a woman came out of the water and removed my uterus from my belly. It was very strange because at that moment I had pain in my lower abdomen. I left the room to join Roger in the kitchen to have tea with him and tell him what happened. But I was shocked that I didn't see him. There was no one in the kitchen or even in the living room. I couldn't find Roger anywhere, so I decided to go back to bed, thinking he was in the bathroom. But as I approached the room he had reserved for these private consultations, I heard moaning again. And the closer I got, the more distinctive it became. It is indeed moaning. But who is there? Who is inside? Seized with fear, I called Roger trembling, so that he would come and listen. But he did not answer. I immediately went into the room and closed the door. I was petrified. At that moment, I did not know the Lord Jesus. So the idea of praying came to my heart, but I didn't know how. A few minutes later, Roger came back sweating. I called you several times, to no avail. I was in the kitchen, but you weren't there. I took a walk outside the house. 
I was very hot. I heard noises in the room you reserved for your home visits. What did you hear? It's just a hallucination. Calm down. No, I'm sure I heard noises. I'm not hallucinating. I'll go inside and see what's going on. Never enter that room. I mean, never. Did you hear me? Roger spoke so angrily that one would have thought he was hiding something. I didn't understand his attitude. What's the matter with you? Why? Don't ask questions. The next day I waited for Roger to go to work and went to open the door to see what was inside that room. When I opened the door, I saw a coffin lying there and inside was a human skeleton. The room was not electrified and was painted red. Red candles were placed in every corner of the room. I immediately left the room in fear. I was so scared that I couldn't breathe. I was shaking like a leaf. Who was Roger really? Was he a Satanist? What was he actually doing in that room? Just as I wanted to leave the house, Roger entered. Where are you going so fast? He dragged me by the hair and took me to the secret room. Roger, what's wrong with you? Let go of me, you're hurting me. I know that you have opened this room, even though I forbade you to do so. From now on, I want you to know that I am in a sect. Where do you think I got all this money from? I gave all my offspring to my master in exchange for money, so we will never have children. What? You're a monster. I'm filing for a divorce. I can't live you. Know that if you leave me, you will die. I started crying. I couldn't believe how I got here. Roger left me there and went away. That was the beginning of my suffering. A few weeks later, I was sinking into depression. I looked like a zombie. I decided to tell my family anyway. I was very disappointed when my mother told me, daughter, you have to put up with it. It's your husband, where will you go? What are we going to do without his money? But mom, he can kill me. I will run away. Shut your mouth, he can't kill you. Listen to me carefully. You're going to stay with him and pretend you don't know anything about it. I came home stunned, depressed. I didn't know what to do. I spent my nights crying. I would never have children. I would live every day in torment. I thought about running away from him, but I didn't know where to go. My family was counting on him. Everyone was counting on him. My parents asked me to keep quiet, to hide the secret, to simply live my life and enjoy my husband's money. What to do? I can't do it. And if I leave her, he will kill me.